Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're moving on with the next video in AP Chemistry Unit 7, Section 11. And this is about how we can work with solutions and equilibrium. Now in this video we're actually going to see if we can predict whether or not a precipitate is going to form based upon the addition of two solutions. Now there's a lot going on here so you'll need to pay close attention, keep your calculator handy here and uh, follow along with these calculations. So in this question it says a chemist adds 100.0 milliliters of 0.250 molar sodium chloride to 200.0 milliliters of 0.200 molar lead to nitrate. If the KSP for lead to chloride is 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, will a precipitate of lead to chloride form? Now there's a strategy that we need to have here as we work this problem. The first thing that you need to realize is this is a Q versus K problem. Now a couple of videos ago we we learned Q versus K. Whenever you have a a mixture that might not be at equilibrium and you're not sure is it going to go uh, to the right or to the left uh, that's kind of what you have here. This is a Q versus K problem. Our strategy basically is in three parts. The first part is to find the concentrations of each component of the possible precipitate after the solutions are combined. This is going to be a fairly simple solution chemistry stoichiometry problem. The second step in the strategy is to plug those concentrations into the expression for Q. In case you've forgotten, the expression for Q looks exactly the same as the expression for K. Products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. Then the third step is to compare the value of Q with the value of K. If Q is greater than K, we are going to have a precipitate. If Q is less than K, there is no precipitate. So let's try a couple of problems here. Here's the first example. Now this is the, the same problem that we had before. I already read that. So we're going to find the concentrations of each component of the possible precipitate. Now the possible precipitate is lead to chloride. And we know that because it gives us the KSP for lead to chloride. We also know that because the other combination, sodium nitrate, well that's soluble. That's not going to make any, any precipitate to speak of. So we're going to work with lead to chloride. So let's start by finding out the concentration of lead. Now concentration is moles divided by liters. So let's find the moles of lead ions. Well it says 0.2 molar times 0.2 liters here. So if you multiply those by each other we find that we have 0.04 moles of lead in the mixture. Now to find the molarity we have to divide this by the volume. Now the total volume when you mix 100 milliliters to 200 milliliters right here will be 300 milliliters. So that's why we're dividing by the 0.3 liters. That's the total volume after you've mixed the two solutions together. We're assuming that volumes are additive. So when you divide that out you find that the molarity of the lead ions will be 0.133 moles per liter. So that's our lead. Now let's see about the chloride. So let's find moles of chloride. We're going to take 0.250 molar times 0.1 liters and that's going to give us 0.025 moles of chloride. When you divide that by your total volume, 0.3 liters, you find that, that the molarity of chloride will be 0.0833 molar. So that's our first step here. We've determined the concentrations of lead and chloride in our resulting solution after they've been mixed. Now let's plug these into the expression for Q. So first of all we're going to need an equation. So here's the equation. Here's the lead to chloride because that's the potential precipitate that we're going to make. And so it would dissociate into lead 2 plus ions and two of these chloride ions. So once again we write the expression for Q. Looks just like the expression for K. Of course we can't call it K because we're not necessarily at equilibrium. So now we're going to plug in the numbers that we calculated in the last step 
and just plug those right in there. 0.133 times 0 0.0833 squared. And so when you do that, you find that Q equals 9.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. So there's our Q. Now, just like in any Q versus K problem, like we had a couple of videos ago, we have to compare them. So is Q greater than K or is Q less than K? Well, it looks like Q is greater than K. So since that's the case, a precipitate will form. Now sometimes, like I mentioned in the last video, sometimes there will be students who uh, kind of confuse uh, Q and K and, and which direction it goes. Well, notice that in this particular example here, we have Q greater than K. So if you forget about how that works, draw the Pac-Man, like I showed you in that other video, and you notice that that Pac-Man looks like it's going to the left. So since it's going to the left, well, what's on the left side of this equation? Well, right there, the left side has the solid. So we are going to be making that precipitate. Let's try another example. A chemist adds 200.0 milliliters of 1.00 times 10 to the negative third molar lithium nitrate to 100.0 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar sodium phosphate. If the KSP for lithium phosphate is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 11th, will a precipitate of lithium phosphate form? So it's the same kind of problem, the same strategy. The first thing we're going to do is find the concentrations of each component in that lithium phosphate after the two solutions are combined. So let's do the lithium first. So looks like the molarity is 1 times 10 to the negative third molar. We times that by 0.2 liters. And we find that the moles of lithium will be 2.00 times 10 to the negative fourth. And to find molarity, we have to divide this by the total volume. We're adding 200 milliliters to 150 milliliters of the other one. So that's 350 milliliters total. So we divide by 0 0.350 liters. When you divide that out, you find that the lithium ion concentration is 5.71 times 10 to the negative fourth. We're going to need to do, uh, to, to do the same thing for the phosphate. So we'll take a look at that. It looks like we have 0 0.100 molar phosphate times 0.150 liters. So when you multiply that together, you get 0.015 moles of phosphate. And we're going to divide that by the same total volume, 0 0.350 liters. And we find that the molarity of phosphate in our combined solution will be 0 0.0429 molar phosphate. So that's the first step in our strategy. We've, we've calculated the concentrations of the lithium and the phosphate. So now we're going to do the second step and plug those numbers into the expression for Q. So we need to write the expression for Q first, and that comes from the balanced equation. So lithium phosphate, Li3PO4 solid, and we're going to be producing three lithium ions, because there's a little three right there, and one phosphate ion. So our Q expression looks like this. It's equal to lithium ions cubed times phosphate ions. So we're going to plug in those numbers that we calculated in the last step right in here. And when we key that into our calculator, 5.71 times 10 to the negative fourth to raised to the third power times 0 0.0429, we find that the value for Q is 8.0 times 10 to the negative twelfth. And we can take a look at the comparison once again in our next step, Q versus K. And so there's Q and there's K. So is Q greater than K or less than K? Well, it's less than K, isn't it? So since that's the case, we are not going to form a precipitate. Think about Q being less than K. And if you forget which direction that means, well, draw in the Pac-Man here. And looks like Pac-Man is going to the right. So when Pac-Man is going to the right, 
but what's written on the right side of the equation? Well, here's the equation on the right side. It's the ion form. There's no solid there. So that means no solid. You're going to have just ions, no precipitate forms. Now let's take a look at another application of precipitates and solution chemistry and equilibrium. Here we have a different type of question. It says if 0 0.20 molar of sodium chloride solution is added dropwise to a beaker containing 0 0.30 molar lead 2 nitrate and 0 0.30 molar mercury 2 nitrate solutions, which precipitate will form first? So this is an interesting question. We have two potential possibilities. We know that uh, if we just dump the whole in, uh, this whole thing in, we'll have lead chloride and mercury 2 chloride. But the question is, adding it dropwise, which one forms first? And we have the two potential precipitates and the two KSP values. Well, the one that forms first is going to be the one that's least soluble, isn't it? And the one that's least soluble is the lead 2 chloride. And so our rationale is that lead 2 chloride will form first because its KSP value is smaller. Therefore, lead 2 chloride is less soluble than mercury 2 chloride. I hope this video has helped you to, to apply the Q versus K concept to equilibrium and to solution chemistry as well. If you learned something from this video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't already done so, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you'll have access to all 100 plus of my AP chemistry videos and my AP review videos, as well as all kinds of other uh, problem walkthroughs and good stuff there. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in my next video where we're going to wrap up Unit 7.